So Spider-Man 2 was my most anticipated game of 2023. And as my most anticipated game, it was also my most disappointing. Now, it wasn't the gameplay necessarily that disappointed me. I feel like they knocked that out of the park with the web wings, the swinging around in New York City. That was great. Where they disappointed me was the story, specifically certain parts in the story. So I've taken the liberty to rewrite some of those moments in the story to fit, I guess, a better narrative or one that I felt would have been more impactful or emotional. Because why not? YouTube, right? So the specific story moment that I'm gonna be rewriting, so to say, and talking about how I feel kind of should have happened was the fight between Miles and Pete. So by now, everyone has probably played the game or at least you know that Miles and Peter fight in the game. It's inevitable. The game's been out since October. It's it's kind of unavoidable at this point. So I wasn't exactly a huge fan of how that fight went, per se. So the fight starts, you're Peter, obviously, in the symbiote, full rage mode, hunting down Kraven because he's kidnapped Miles. So you arrive at Kraven's hideout, you fight all his men, you kind of just decimate, blow through them, and destroy them because, you know, you're in the symbiote. So why wouldn't you? So, and then you get to the Craven boss fight. Now, at this point in the game, Peter is full rage mode in the symbiote. He's angry. The, the symbiote even shows it. The symbiote displays the change in Peter, and Peter at this point is probably at his peak strength with the symbiote suit on. So you have the whole Craven boss fight. You get there, Craven traps you, you know, all that good stuff. And you see that Miles kind of got his ass beat by Craven. Craven has him locked in the cage and he's gotten his ass beat. Now, at this point in the game, this is where we start fighting Craven. The whole boss fight, you know, that boss fight was good. It was great. Played out how I felt, you know, it kind of should have. And then we get to the Miles and Peter boss fight. Now, at this point in the story, we get the perspective shift where we play as Miles, which that part. I was perfectly fine with that part i agreed with insomniac doing that i feel like it was good to have us you know get the perspective shift to miles after kind of just playing as peter in full rage mode this way we get to see from miles's perspective how it is to fight against symbiote peter when he's lost control so it gives us the player the opposite view to see peter angry and fight against him what i did not like and agree with was how for whatever reason insomniac chose to turn the game onto easy mode for this boss fight if you've played the boss fight you know that this is by far the easiest boss fight in the entire game and the game is not necessarily easy there's certain moments in the combat where i've gotten my ass kicked if you're just mashing buttons and you're not actually paying attention dodging parrying at the right moment you can you can easily die in this game this by far was the it was just so easy it was the easiest boss fight in the entire game and probably the easiest fight in the entire game you play as miles and you just absolutely decimate peter miles has all these abilities which is perfectly fine i you know he has he's a different type of spider-man so he has these abilities but Insomniac, for whatever reason, chose to make Miles a Mary Sue, where he is just handed everything in the game without really having to go through much to earn it or work for it. Now, there is, you know, there is moments in the game where Miles does have to earn certain things. But aside from that, he's kind of just given all these powers and abilities. He doesn't really have to do anything. He just wakes up and he's like, oh, I got this new power. I got this new ability. I don't know why they kind of chose to do that with Miles because that kind of takes away all the allure of Spider-Man. You see, Spider-Man is a great hero. He's a great character. He's so relatable because nothing is easy for him. He's like the regular person. He struggles. He has issues. He struggles with money. He struggles with work. He struggles with school. He struggles with life. He struggles with time trying to manage being a superhero and do all these things and he struggles in his own relationships that's what makes spider-man great is that his struggles and that regardless of his struggles he keeps getting back up but them kind of just handing everything to miles and making him like the golden boy kind of takes all that away so one this boss fight was super easy 
and two i did not agree with them having miles defeat peter i feel at this point in the story especially after spider-man one it made no sense now at this point in the game peter has been spider-man for like almost 10 years now he's a seasoned pro he has combat experience and he's been at it longer than miles and he's also older than miles so his overall combat experience and his physical strength is kind of way above miles miles is still very inexperienced miles does have you know the same abilities as peter as well as his own but it's the lack of combat skill and experience that kind of set them apart so in my opinion it doesn't really make much sense for miles to be able to beat base peter let alone a peter who's powered up by the symbiote in my opinion it wasn't really good storytelling it was kind of just them just once again you know just kind of handing everything over to miles which didn't really make much sense miles still lacks the experience as peter heck in the first game peter has no symbiote and he fights the entire sinister six by himself and with broken bones and in this one somehow miles who couldn't even beat rhino a year ago granted you know he's got more experience now but he couldn't even beat rhino on his own is somehow taking down the man who just took down Craven, who just decimated Miles, and somehow, you, you, you see what I mean here? It's just, the math's not mathing. It doesn't really make much sense. You know, Peter just, as Peter, we, we just beat Craven, the person who just beat Miles. Miles didn't stand a chance against Craven. So, how is it he can just easily defeat the person who beat him? Now, I know they were using the bell mechanic for the boss fight and everything and that's perfectly fine but in terms of in terms of story and writing it didn't really make much sense for miles to be able to beat peter so now this is the part where a lot of people may agree or disagree with but this is where i'm going to take my shot at rewriting this boss fight into how i feel it should have happened or in a manner that i feel would have been more befitting of the story and these characters so miles and peter the fight you know starts like normal there's the bell peter's angry and we get that perspective shift to miles that part i agree with that part can stay however during this boss fight instead of it going on easy mode i feel that immediately we should see the difference in strength and skill between peter and miles let alone peter wearing the symbiote I feel this should have been an extremely tough boss fight and I also feel that in the end we should have lost this boss fight. I feel, you know, we fight Peter, we do the whole thing, we have the phases like they did in the game, but at the end of this boss fight I felt we should have lost. This would have been a good opportunity for Insomniac to showcase how the symbiote fares against someone with the same powers as Peter or who even has more abilities than Peter. It would have been a good perspective shift to be like, hey, we don't have the power of the symbiote anymore. Now the power of the symbiote is going against us. Kind of like how they did with the MJ mission, which <clears throat> that was good too. But at the same time, like it was MJ. So we're not really fighting Peter. We're just running from him. Even if Peter didn't have the symbiote on and say he was the type of person to just get angry at MJ, that whole scenario would have played out exactly the same if he just wanted to chase her down and hurt her. But in this moment you know we we are spider-man fighting against the symbiote so it would have been a good time to showcase the power of the symbiote against us and see just how much the symbiote and peter have over miles so i feel miles should have lost that boss fight no matter what i feel like us as the player you know it should have lost the boss fight it should have been scripted and I feel that this is where I felt, you know, the story should have got a little bit more darker. I feel that, you know, Peter should have defeated Miles and then he just absolutely starts wailing on him, just beating the crap out of Miles, like no holding back, just pounding on his face. And this is where, you know, they could have tugged at our heartstrings. I feel like at this moment when Miles is battered and beaten and bloody and lying on the floor in front of Peter, he could have spoken to Peter and say, 
repeat, you can beat this. I know this isn't you. You are my hero, Peter. You are Spider-Man. You are everything that I have ever wanted to be. And at this moment, Peter, I feel, could have come to his senses and gotten flashbacks to the first game. Because if you remember, the scenario that was going on here is the same exact scenario that happened at the end of the first game with Peter and Dr. Octavius. Dr. Octavius was Peter's mentor. Peter looked up to him and he was everything that Peter wanted to be. And now the roles are reversed. Now Peter is the mentor, Miles is the student, and Miles looks up to Peter and Peter is everything Miles wants to be. And Peter, having hearing those words from Miles, has the reality check that he has essentially become the same as Dr. Octavius. He has become his mentor. He has become the villain and he has become the very thing that he sought to defeat in the first game. And I felt like this would have been an impactful moment, not only for us as the players, especially us who've played the first game, but for the characters as well to kind of have this perspective shift for Peter and to see in his head Oh no, what am I doing? What have I become? I've become the very thing that I sought to stop. And it can be at this moment that Peter comes to his senses and tries to remove the symbiote. And we get the whole scene that plays out for us taking off the symbiote. And Miles gets up and he starts ringing the bell to assist Peter. And Peter is finally able to remove the symbiote. They trap the symbiote in the canister. And Peter looks at Miles seeing what he has done to him and he starts crying and he says miles i'm sorry and thank you today you saved me today you were my hero and today you are my spider -Man. now let me know in the comments below if you like you know this scenario that i kind of rewrote if you agree with it if you disagree with it or i would like to hear you know your own scenarios of how you feel this moment in the story should have played out or if you liked how they did it i'm very curious to hear it i feel like if insomniac did this route it would have just been more emotional and more impactful and i feel like personally in the story that's where they had their slip ups the most the game kind of felt like the story kind of felt like there was more to it Everything around it kind of felt rushed. You know, we only have the symbiote on for like two days and Peter has all these moods and personality shifts within just two days. I feel like there wasn't enough time given for the symbiote and I feel like there definitely wasn't enough time given to Venom. But that's for another video. So if you guys enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.